Hi everyone, welcome to Plastic on Plastics. My name is Tristan, and today we're going over the seven different types of plastic categories. A lot of people think plastic is just one thing, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. There are more than seven, but they are generally uh, segregated into seven different categories. We're gonna be running through these categories today in a pretty brief and short point form video. We do have videos on all uh, each individual categories as well. The first type of plastic, also known as number one, is polyethylene terephthalate, or PET. PET is generally known or most well known for being in soda or pop bottles. Around the world, there are so many of these produced that it's actually quite easy to recycle PET. PET has the highest recycling rate of around 30%, but that does depend on the country. One of the reasons why it's so easy to recycle PET is once we remove the cap, we have such a simple plastic product here. There's no residue. It can easily be rinsed, grinded out. Um, generally, all of these that are gonna be recycled are gonna be the same wear and tear. Um, so if this was in the ocean, maybe degrading for 30 years, it'd be a lot harder to uh, recycle. But because there are so many plastic bottles produced and recycled every day, the stream of materials is quite consistent and these can be grinded down and turned into new plastic bottles. So PET is actually one of the more environmentally uh, sustainable plastics because of the higher recycling rate compared to other plastics. However, that doesn't mean that PET is a fantastic material for all sorts of applications and should only be used re when required. Some other areas of PET might be in use, for example, would be like cosmetic containers, PET rope, uh, different uh, applications for cars and automobiles, such as bumpers, for example, are sometimes made out of PET and the list goes on. The next type of plastic, number two, is HDPE or high density polyethylene. High density polyethylene has a very, very good chemical resistance property. So you will most commonly come in contact with HDPE uh, in chemical containers. So like this like window spray or this tile cleaner, both of which are HDPE. You will also find HDPE in uh, milk jugs, for example. The reason why is because HDPE is actually extremely strong. This is why a relatively light HDPE container, uh, two ounce milk jug can hold a gallon of milk without any problem. And if you, if you drop it, generally it won't crack or anything. It is very strong. Now, because it's so well used and used in a similar application as PET with liquids, something clean, uh, easy to separate, easy to grind down, HDPE is also highly recycled compared to the other plastics at around 25%, but this does vary on country to country. The next type of plastic is number three, or polyvinyl chloride, PVC. PVC, you will probably remember from, if you've ever done construction, PVC piping is very well known in the construction area. PVC can be used in both a hard and soft application. So PVC pipe is obviously a hard application. And then you also have PVC inflatable boats. So that's also PVC, just a different form of that. You will come in contact with PVC generally around the house. So for example, uh, underneath the floorboards, there may be some PVC levelers or the rain gutters may be made out of PVC. You will also find PVC in your wallet with credit cards, gift cards, and stuff of that nature. PVC is rarely recycled at a, you know, depending on the country, it can be as low as 1%. Um, this is because the applications that it's used in, for example, PVC piping underground, this is generally something that degrades over time and that's very hard to recycle, it's such a low quality plastic. Also, the nature of PVC does also make it hard to recycle. The next type of plastic is low density polyethylene. So it's kind of the cousin of high density polyethylene. And this is gonna be your number four plastic. The most common use case of number four is in poly bags. So something like Ziploc bag here, that's soft, um, is often made out of low density polyethylene, as well as oftentimes the clear grocery bags that you get in the store will be made with this plastic. Now HDPE, high density polyethylene, can also be made into bags. For example, this grocery bag here with the crinkly sound is actually made of high density polyethylene. Both high density and low density and medium density uh, can be used in very similar forms, so it's kind of hard to tell the difference. And that's why sorting between plastics is such an ongoing challenge, whether it's with HDPE or PET or polypropylene, number five plastic, a lot of things can look the same. This leads us to number five plastic, polypropylene. So polypropylene, or PP for short, is used in a wide variety of applications. 
PP is extremely strong, very good for chemical resistance. It is uh, not brittle, so it can bend and wear over time and still not break. It's also very good for different cosmetic applications, auto applications, heat applications, cold temperature applications. It is used in a variety of ways. It's kind of like your brick and mortar plastic, so that's why it's used so much. However, because it's used in so many of these different applications, it is actually very hard to recycle. For example, polypropylene is used in this camera, for example, for the camera housing and stuff like that. As you can imagine, trying to recycle the bits and pieces of plastic on this polypropylene camera is a lot harder than recycling this bottle and just throwing it in a grinder. So that is why polypropylene, the recycling rate is around 5%. Again, this does vary country to country. However, unlike PVC, polypropylene is just as easy to recycle as PET or HDPE when we're just talking about the chemical compound. The reason why it's actually so hard to recycle is not the the material aspect, but just again, the sorting aspect. Because of the variety of applications this is used in, it is very hard to sort these plastics, get enough together so you can actually grind them down into pellets and then sell them to a plastic manufacturer. Polypropylene is actually a plastic that we use quite a bit at Plasticom Plastics, but we actually use PCR polypropylene, so post-consumer recycled material. We're trying to get polypropylene to have a more consistent recycle flow so we can increase that recycling rate like PET or HDPE. So in the future, recycling polypropylene can be a more standard practice. The next category is number six, polystyrene or PS. Polystyrene is generally known as styrofoam. Polystyrene is one of the worst plastics for the environment. One of the reasons why is because it's extremely brittle. As you can imagine, this polystyrene container is very easy to break. And when this gets thrown or littered into the environment, for example, the ocean, it gets quickly broken down faster and faster into smaller and smaller microplastics. So instead of being able to float around, for example, and get picked up eventually and cleaned and recycled, it just instantly disperses into a hundred pieces. So it's almost impossible to reclaim the, the environmental damage it may cause because it just gets dispersed so quickly. It is also very hard to recycle and has to be sorted individually. So a lot of municipalities, for example, Vancouver will recycle it, but you have to take it often to maybe a different store or a different area that accepts polystyrene. Oftentimes, if you just put it in your blue box for recycling, it actually won't get recycled. The last plastic is number seven. Number seven is other. It has a ton of different plastics in it, such as BPA or PLA. PLA is known as a biodegradable plastic. So for example, a lot of takeout containers, stores will start making a biodegradable plastic uh, forks, knives, containers out of PLA. Now the reason why PLA is great is because it is compostable and it can be marketed as compostable, but that is also its downfall. Because PLA is grouped in with all the other number seven plastics, it actually often doesn't get to the composting facility. When a lot of plastics are grouped into one area, such as all in number seven plastics, it is very hard to sort. So PLA, biodegradable plastics, gets thrown in with all the other number seven plastics, and a lot of them just get thrown out. So the recyclability of PLA is pretty much zero, it needs to be composted, and the composting rate is actually very low because it gets grouped in with all the other number seven plastics. As you can imagine, all the other number seven plastics also have a very, very low, if not zero recycling rate. One interesting note that has to do with the recycling rates, but doesn't actually have to do with the plastics itself, is color. A lot of people don't know that color is a big contributor on whether or not plastic is gonna be recycled. For example, the color black has a very low uh, recycling worth uh, once it's recycled, whereas white has a very high value. This is because a white recycled plastic can be turned into any color available, whereas black can only be turned into another black product. Therefore, without even checking what type of plastic it is, you actually have a little bit of a hint on whether or not it's gonna be recycled more or less based on its color. The lighter colors like white, very light blue are gonna be recycled and used a lot more often than the dark colors like purple, dark blue, and black. If you found this video interesting, please leave a comment, please give us a like, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have specific questions on injection molding, please contact us at plasticonplastics.com. Often we get a lot of specific comments down in the comments, but our marketing team can't really help with those very high-tech engineering questions, so just shoot us an email on plasticonplastics.com.